the man I was with became claustrophobic and he couldn't stay in that hole anymore and it was after daylight and we got out outside and decided we'd climb to the top of the hill and look at the river and use it as a guide and try to keep it to our left so we'd go south. And as we were on our knees looking over that bank, we were spotted by some Chinese soldiers and they blew a whistle and we laid down quickly in the grass. But the, about 20 of them walked across in front of us. And one man walked to our rear, and we were laying on that hillside, and he yelled at those others, and they turned around and came right back to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, as best of my knowledge, or as best I can calculate, that was the 10th day of November, 1950. They took us, both of us, as prisoners. We stood up and surrendered. November what? 10th. 10th. As best I can calculate, that would have been the 10th of November, late in the afternoon. And we were taken right back to the house that we'd stayed in two nights before where the old man came yeah, and got us. Yeah. And they had set up sort of a headquarters because they had maps and stuff on the wall and they had the lanterns and things in there. And we were kept there that night and then the next day we were turned over to a field unit. And we were just kept out there, just the two of us. And the following day, the third day of captivity, we were marched up a road just near dark, and we were joined up there with uh, seven more Americans, which made nine altogether. And they were all from the same battalion, the 3rd Battalion of the 8th Cal. And there was about 20 South Korean soldiers, Rock Army soldiers. Mm -hmm. But we were kept segregated. Mm -hmm. And then each night from then on for about the next week, we were marched northward every night. We'd walk till daylight in the morning. 